Have you noticed that pretty much everybody on the internet seems to really dislike the Sony Alpha menu system? You might even be one of those people. And because of that disdain, those people aren't willing to take the time to learn the ins and outs of these cameras. But you know what that means? More features for me. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about seven hidden Sony Alpha features that you didn't know about. And at the end of the video, if you did happen to know all of them, let me know in the comments and I'll give you a virtual high five. Before we get into this, let me give you the quick disclaimer that your mileage may vary depending on which camera you have. Sony is constantly making changes to the functions and features of their cameras as new ones come out. So if I say something and you don't have it on your camera, blame Sony, not me, and petition for a firmware upgrade. Okay, number one on our list is so simple and so handy for getting through the menus quickly. Hitting the function button in the menu system scrolls through the tabs. That's how simple it is. Now I know what you're thinking, come on Donna, that's dumb, how much of a difference could it actually make? To which I would say, more than you think. Normally when you're in the menu system, there are three parts, tabs, pages, and then the actual functions themselves. In order to scroll through the tabs, you have to move your cursor all the way to the top and then hit left or right. So if you happen to be halfway down the menu, you have to either go all the way down far enough to wrap around and go back to the top, or you can go up to get there. With the function button, no matter where your cursor is, you hit that button and it'll move over to the right by one tab. But if it seems too good to be true, it's because it is. There is a catch. This function, for whatever reason, only works on Sony's full frame lineup. Even though there have been APS-C cameras released since this was introduced, it didn't get moved over with the newer cameras like the A6400 and A6600. On my A7 III, this trick works like a charm. But on my A6600 and 6400, if I hit the function button while I'm in the menu, it kicks me out of the menu and brings up the function bar at the bottom of the screen. Now, the function bar is very handy on its own. You can see how I set up mine on the A6600 here, but I would love for Sony to incorporate this simple little thing on their APS-C line too. The next function we're gonna talk about today is the auto white balance lock toggle feature. This can be found on the newer Sony cameras from the A6400 and on. If you're a run and gun video shooter, sometimes using auto white balance can be handy when moving from one situation to another and having to quickly capture whatever happens to be going on. I'm looking at you vloggers but it is absolutely the worst when you're in the middle of a video clip and the camera decides to change the white balance on you, completely changing the colors in your scene and making color grading a complete nightmare. By assigning auto white balance lock toggle to a custom button on your camera, you can allow the camera to get the white balance and then lock it off before you start shooting so it doesn't change in the middle of your shot. Just hit that custom button before the shot and you'll be good to go with no fluctuation in color temperature during your shot. The third function is another one that you have to assign to a custom button to gain access to. I learned this from Stan Moniz when I was taking an Astro time-lapse workshop at Sony Camera Camp, and it is called bright monitoring, but don't get it confused with the screen brightness. This function allows you to see better in dark situations so that you can compose and focus your shot properly in those scenarios. If you're shooting astrophotography, this is an absolute game changer. There are some limitations to this feature though. For example, it only works in manual focus mode. It doesn't work in movie recording and it will automatically disable itself if you're using the manual focus assist zoom in. Basically, it cranks up the exposure of the shot temporarily to allow you to compose and focus, but then when you actually go to take the shot, it uses the settings that you have dialed into your camera. So if you're in a situation where you're using this, you might notice while you're monitoring that the shutter speed looks like it's super slow, but when you actually take the shot, it'll be what you have it set as. The fourth feature I briefly mentioned in my video of three different ways to do a time-lapse, and this is picture stacking and continuous playback. When 
When you're in playback mode, you can compile groups of pictures into what they call stacks and then play them back in succession. In order to set this up, head into the menus, into the playback menu and choose display as group and change it to on. Turning this on will automatically stack two different types of photo groups. The first are shots taken using burst mode and the second are shots using the interval timer function. I find this specifically handy for the interval timer shots, AKA time-lapse, because once you have the photo stacked, you can expand that stack using the center button and then press down to start playing back all the photos in that stack. At this point, you can also change the speed of the playback by rotating the wheel. I find that a speed of two looks similar enough to 24 or 30 frames per second. So if you shot a whole time-lapse in the interval function, you can now get a preview of approximately what it's going to look like in the end. As an alternative method, if you don't like stacking in your regular playback view, you can also choose continuous playback for interval from the playback menu, and it will do a temporary version of what I was just talking about until you exit that mode. Number five on our list is something that I knew about for a while, but I didn't really utilize until recently, and that is photo rating, and specifically setting a custom button to rate the photos in playback mode. Now I know some of you are rolling your eyes right now because this is actually a pretty common feature on a lot of cameras, but you'd be surprised how many people I tell about this that have no idea. So here's how to make it happen. Go to the custom key settings and choose the setup for playback custom keys. Choose the custom button you want to set to rating, and then it's going to prompt you with the star numbers to cycle through. You can set it up so that you can rate it on a one to five star system by hitting the custom button multiple times, or if you're like me, you can just make it to make selections. To do this, I deselect all the star ratings except for the three star. Then when I'm in playback mode and I hit the rating custom button, it toggles between a three star or not being rated at all. When I import this batch of photos into Lightroom, those three star star ratings are all in there so I can sort by a three star rating and I've already got all my selections made, making the whole process of sorting and culling so much smoother. Now, you may know about the memory functions that are on these cameras where you can set up a specific set of settings and assign it to a mode on the dial. But did you know about Recall Custom Hold? This is another feature that you assign to a custom button and it works similarly to the memory function, but it only works temporarily as you hold down that button. You can set this up two ways. The first way is to get all the settings that you want dialed in on your camera and then find Register Custom Shoot Set on tab one page four of my a6600 and my a7 III anyway. Select recall custom hold one, two, or three, and then choose which settings you would like it to temporarily change, and then hit import current setting. Alternatively, you can use that same menu to dial in the settings that you want on the right hand side. Then go to your custom key setup and choose which key you want it to be assigned to. Remembering that you'll have to be holding it while you shoot, so probably choose a key on the back of the camera. Now, when you hold down that key, you'll see that your settings will temporarily shift while you shoot, and then as you let go, they'll go back to what they were before. Unfortunately, there's no way to make this work in movie mode, but if you're clever, you can still get it to speed things up for hybrid shooters. And before I get into the final tip, if you feel like you're getting something out of this video, do me a favor and give me the triple tap. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell notification button. Okay, last but certainly not least is the gamma assist feature. If you're someone who shoots in a log picture profile like S-Log2, S-Log3, or hybrid log gamma, enabling gamma assist will effectively apply a LUT so that you can see what the final exposure of your shot might look like after correction. Sometimes with the log gammas, it's tough to know when you're nailing the exposure without using a bunch of extra tools. So this can be really handy and a quick way to get your exposure looking at least half decent when you're out running and gunning. I personally keep this feature parked in my function menu and turn it on when I need it. But as always, I wanna hear from you. What hidden or lesser known features do you think I missed in this video? Leave a comment below and don't forget to give me that triple tap on your way down. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>